Hey, what's up guys? I just wanted to do a little uh, mini-series where I'm going to be doing some tastings of a few samples that I have. So I don't have full bottles of these. Um, I'm going to do this in probably three parts. Um, one will be these three, one will be another selection of three, and the other will be two uh, barrel proofs. I want to do this as a separate one because it's unfair to compare them to something like this. So. First, we're going to take a look at this guy. Uh, it's Isaac Bowman uh, Port Finish um, Bourbon. So, as, as might have come up before, Isaac Bowman is sourced from Buffalo Trace. It is distilled twice um, at Buffalo Trace, shipped to Virginia, distilled again. And then that's where they barrel it and they age it. So it is aged in Virginia. It is not aged with Buffalo Trace. Now this one is aged somewhere between four and five years. They don't actually say it. Um, and then it finishes in a port barrel for about three to six months. Um, and this is according to Bum Brothers. Um, it is also not their regular bourbon. Um, they don't say what it is, but it is not their traditional Bowman Brothers small batch. Um, so, that being said, let's get into this. This is going to be similar to something like the Angel's Envy. Um, that's a popular port barrel finished bourbon. So, um, it doesn't really come up on camera. It has a very reddish tint to it. Um, yeah, there we go. It does show. It's it. You, you can tell that this spent a decent amount of time in a port barrel. So, Vanilla, lots of vanilla. Gr like a red. It smells like wine. I don't know what. I mean, it's port, so likely a red wine, but it smells like. There's almost like. That's most of what I'm getting. Um, maybe a little tea leaf. I couldn't place what kind. Has a little bit of that spice that is characteristic of the Bowman small batch. Um, but yeah, let's get into this. Grape. Red grape. Um, vanilla, a little bit of spice, again, that's normal for uh, Bowman products. That sort of tea leaf is still kind of there. I can't place exactly what it is. It definitely tastes... The, the port does a lot to this. It, it, you don't get a lot of the bourbon flavors, to be quite honest. You get a lot of the, um, you know, some of that vanilla is kind of there in the background, but you get grape, you get wine, you get that tea leaf. Again, I can't necessarily place what that is. You get the spice, but that spice is the, the stronger, more bold parts of the bourbon coming out. It's, this is, it's good. I prefer this to Angel's Envy, if I'm being honest. It's different. It has that Buffalo Trace sort of feel to it, that mouthfeel, that sort of slight bitiness, um, which is, of course, enhanced by the fact that it's then finished in Virginia in different oak barrels. Um, that is very characteristic of the... Uh, that's where the pepper notes come from in this in the Bowman small batch. But this is solid. Um, again, this runs about 50 bucks if you can find it. Um, and I'm kind of sad I only have a two ounce sampler of this. I would buy a full bottle in a heartbeat. Um, it won, I want to say it won, let me see. I know I have this up. It won World's Best Bourbon in 2016. Um, and this is, I mean, yeah, the, the port finish really, I, I think I like it more than the small batch and the small batch is one of my favorite bourbons in the price range that I've had. 
Um, it just makes it robust. It's smoother, higher proof than Angel's Envy, and then most of the other port barrel finished um, bourbons you can find easily. And it doesn't taste young despite being young according to Bowman. And I'm curious to see what it airing out a little bit more does. Um, again, I don't know how this would compare to the neck pour. Uh, I obviously haven't had the neck pour because I just got a sample from someone's already opened bottle. So I don't know how long this has been opened. I don't know how much air has affected this. Um, but as it stands, this is delicious. All right, now on to part two. Um, we're taking a look at, this is the Calumet Farm, this guy here, Calumet Farm 14 year. Um, so it's 96 proof. Um, it's sort of, it's not super dark, it's not super light. Again, this is aged 14 years. Um, this is a higher rye mash bill. Um, but let's just, I mean, there's not much else to say. Let's just go into this. Whoa, whoa, cherry. So much cherry. Little bit of vanilla, very sweet smelling in general, very. The nose is very present um, and it smells good. Um, it reminds me of, that's why this smells familiar. It reminds me of New Riff. Um, the nose reminds me of the regular New Riff. Um, not so much a single barrel. Um, but that being said, that's not a bad thing at all. I love New Riff. So let's see if it tastes like New Riff, I guess. <laughs> a little bit tannic. It's, it's like a dry sweetness. Um, but a little bit of spice, that's, I think, where the dryness is coming in. It tastes a lot like New Riff product. But it's... It doesn't feel super thin, but it doesn't have a super, super pre present mouthfeel. It sort of just disperses itself across your tongue. Um, and the flavor is... I can't pick out anything specific. There's not really any cherry. It's just a dry sweetness, almost like a burnt caramel or like, like vanilla bean, but not like, you know, a vanilla sweetener or that kind of like, you know, like a vanilla flavored ice cream or something like that. It's like a vanilla bean. It's like the dry version of the sweet flavor. Um, it's pretty oaky on the finish, but I don't get that oak in the middle. Uh, it just sort of comes in right at the end. It's not super... It doesn't really stand out too much to me. I like it. But nothing really shouts at me that this is super different. And at over $100 a bottle, I don't know that I would go for this. Um, it is really interesting, and I do like it. But I feel like at 100 bucks, I'd go for a midwinter. Or I'd go for... You know, something that is a lot more robust, more complex. This reminds me of just a, a semi-sweet bourbon. Um, and I'm not a fan of the, the sort of little kind of tannic flavor I'm getting on the palate. Even though it goes away, it just, it, it leaves a wrong taste in my mouth that I'm not the biggest fan of. But if that's up your alley, this nails it. So, um, I don't really have too much more to say about it. It's... It's decent. It's... If you've never had it, and you like Calumet stuff, give it a try. But I personally, I don't think I would buy a bottle of this. It's really good, but I don't think I'd buy a bottle. Alright, and last but not least for this first round of sampler tasting, we're going to take a look at the Sam Houston 14 year. So, right off the bat, so it's 98 proof, uh, obviously aged 14 years minimum. It has actually the exact same mash bill as the Calumet 14. Um, 
Now, obviously, I've done my research before this, so I know some of this information. But um, this is also, I want to say about 10 bucks more. It averages about $120. Um, let's see if I think it's worth it. So it's a little bit of honey, little oak, little bit of caramel, ethanol for sure. It smells hot. Um, and at 98 proof, it smells hotter than some higher proof things I've had. Um, nothing complex. It, it smells, it doesn't smell off-putting. It doesn't smell super distinct to me either. So let's give it a try. Ooh. Oak, orange, but like orange zest. A little bit of caramel, but it's so overpowered by oak. Um, given the fact that this is 14 years, um, that's not too surprising. It's, it tastes very, it's, it, it, it's kind of simple. Um, there's nothing too crazy to it. It just tastes like an eight, like a 14 year old whiskey, if that makes sense. Um, they do a good job of it. It's simple. It works, but it doesn't jump out at me. It's good quality. Um, I would almost want to see them. I would almost, it makes me want to try more of their stuff, but at $120, I wouldn't buy it just because I can pay less money for something that is a lot more, well, has a lot more character, a lot more personality to it. Um, of the three here, I'd easily pick the Isaac Bowman. Um, next, I would probably pick the Calumet. Um, the Sam Houston, I put at the end, but it's good enough and they do it well enough that I want to try more stuff from them. And if the price were lower, or if they had a lower price offering, I would, without hesitation, give it a try. So that being said, that's round one of the sampler tastings. Um, stay tuned for more.